Hey, this is Barry here, and you are very, very welcome to today's podcast episode. Now, today's podcast episode, I'm not going to talk about me. I'm not going to talk about passion businesses. I'm going to talk about you. And the reason I want to talk about you is because you are the one who's going to sabotage your own success. You know, you might like to think that your competition is the people that you need to compete with and you need to keep up with and your competition is going to bring down your business. But really, the only one that's going to bring down your business is you. It's all solely square on your shoulders and what you do and what you don't do. You know, probably to explain it a bit more, I'm going to use a quote from the great Dan Kennedy, where he said, you will probably be the worst employee that you can hire and you'll also probably be the worst boss of that employee. And what he meant by that was that a lot of us just don't have it in us to build businesses online and offline because we're just not right for the job. We just haven't got here what we need to do it. And I want you to seriously think about it for a moment. I want you to think about the business that you're hopefully going to put together. And I want you to seriously just question yourself for a moment and just ask yourself, would you hire you to fill the position? Now, hopefully you might have said yes, but if you were honest and gave it some serious thought, you're probably going to say no. I'm probably not right for the job. That if this job was open and if you were sitting interviewing these people and you were interviewing you, you'd probably not hire yourself. You'd hire someone better than you. And I don't want you having dreams of building a passion business and, you know, all the success, all the money you're looking forward to, and it's just being sabotaged by you. So I want you to get you out of the way first. I want you to be the best employee, the best boss that you can have, that when you start working on this business, it will be successful. And that's because you have the right mindset. Now, what you need to do is you need to consider your self-discipline and your accountability. Because right now you're probably working on your own. You haven't got a boss keeping an eye on you. You haven't got employees that you need to keep up with. It's probably just you solely working on your business. And because of that, you need to have good self-discipline and you need to have accountability. Now, most of us who try to build passion businesses have probably come from backgrounds where we work a nine to five job, where we were just simply an employee. We just did whatever was needed to be done. We collect the paycheck and that was as far as responsibility ended. But you're going to find if you are going to build a passion business, you're going to take on a lot of different things. You are going to be where the buck stops. You're not going to be able to walk away from your business on a Friday evening and just forget about it. Because if it's going to be successful, it's really sitting on your shoulders. How much work you put into it. How dedicated you are to it. And how accountable you are. Now again, going back to Dan Kennedy, I remember reading in one of his books where he said that if a camera crew followed you around during your daily hours, what would they record? Again, a lot of us, we just deceive ourselves. We say, well, I was busy working on my business and, you know, I'm a hard worker and I'm this and I'm that. And really, if we had our lives recorded and played back to us, you would find that that is far from the truth. So if you are looking to be successful in this business that you plan to do, you need to have strong discipline. You need to force your butt in the seat on days when you don't want to do it. There will be days where you're just not going to feel motivated, where you just don't want to write that blog post, where you don't want to record that video, where you don't want to do the podcast episode, where you're thinking to yourself, oh God, I've got another 10 videos I need to record for my digital product. There's going to be days like that. And on those days like that, those are the most important days. Because anyone can write when they are full of energy, full of motivation, full of inspiration. But you're going to have bad days. You're going to have low days where you're going to be tired. You're not going to feel motivated. You're not going to feel inspired. But you still need to sit down and you need to churn out the work. You need to do the work. So that's the first thing you need to think about is your discipline and your accountability. Now you will find that the more disciplined you are, the better you're going to feel about yourself. The more confidence you're going to feel about yourself because you are going to put in the work. 
And when you start getting the results from that work, you're going to think to yourself, you know something, I really deserve this because I have put the work in. I've written all those blog posts, I've made the videos, I've created the digital products. So I am deserving of the cash of the audience that I get. And sometimes our success, sometimes we mentally hold it away with the mental programming we have in our head because we feel we don't deserve it. You know, if somebody handed you a check right now for $10,000 and said, I'm going to hire you for a coach for a year, you might look at that cash and say, God, that's great. I made $10,000. But I want you to think about really how would you feel in yourself of deserving of getting that money? Would you feel deserving of it? Now, some, some of us don't feel deserving and we would probably find some way to sabotage it in one way or another so we'd lose that client and we'd lose that that money so sometimes by being more disciplined it's going to improve your confidence in yourself and then when you do have success you're going to feel deserving of it you're going to accept the clients you're going to accept the cash because you feel you deserve it so that's the first thing you need to think about is working on your self-discipline and your accountability. Now again, going back to you, you're probably working on your own. So how do you be accountable to yourself? Well, one good way is just to maybe get a notebook and just write down every day what you've done, what you've written, what you've recorded, what steps you've done, and then maybe look at that list and then just ask yourself, was this the best I could have done today? Or could I have done a little bit more? Now, you may find that maybe in the beginning, a lot of us kid ourselves where we say, well, I did all this work. You know, I was busy. I, you know, so much done. And really, when you look at it on the page, it just was probably a few things. And in the middle of that, we were probably on social media or we were just, you know, surfing the Internet or talking to other people or whatever and not actually doing what we should have did. So what you need to do is you need to write down what you're doing each day and then look at it and be honest with yourself. Was that the best you could do? And again, look at what you're doing and think to yourself where you are, would like to go. You know, maybe what audience you'd like to have, how much money you'd like to make. And then I want you to seriously look at what you did that day and then ask yourself, if I keep doing this day after day after day after day, is it going to bring me closer to that goal? Or am I just going to be just a busy fool not making any progress? And again, too, one easy way to keep an idea of your accountability is just see the work that you have. You know, what happens? Maybe write down how much money you made that day. Maybe write down how many people had visited your blog. How many people had subscribed to your channel. How many email subscribers you got. And write those numbers down. And over time, as you go through page after page, you should see there should be a progressive pattern where it should be growing. And if it's not growing, well, then you need to be honest with yourself. Are you really doing the best that you can? Now, you're going to find that when it comes to passion, passion business, you know, while it seems all great, you know, you're going to build a business around your passion. And if you're working on your passion, it's going to be easy. It's going to be all lovey-dovey. But you're going to find that excitement is going to wear off very, very quickly. You know, when I think back to my first Kindle book, I was so excited when I did get the courage up to actually write the book. But I was so excited to get into that book and start writing it. And then after the first chapter, my enthusiasm just dropped through the floor. Because I'm thinking to myself, Barry, it took you this long to do chapter one and you have got so many chapters you need to write. And I had to force myself to do that writing. You know, I was excited in the beginning and you are probably going to be excited in the beginning as well too. You have all these lovely dreams of having a huge blog or having all these digital products, having a huge audience on social media. But reality is going to kick you in the butt. That excitement is going to go away. So what you need to do is you need to lean into your self-discipline and your accountability to help you through those moments. Because as I said, you know, when we think of a passion business, we think, oh, it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows and lollipops and it's going to be brilliant. But you're going to find that life is going to test you. It just wants to see how much do you want it. So you need sometimes to put up a fight. You have to prove to life to say, well, I deserve that goal. I deserve to have that audience. So remember that passion isn't always going to be there. And there will be days when you need to force yourself to sit in the chair when you don't want to do it. Now, two things that you also need to get out of the way when it comes to improving yourself 
and being a better version of yourself and attracting more success to you, you have to knock these two things on the head. Perfectionism and procrastination. You need to take those two words out of your dictionary and never bring them up again. Because perfectionism is, it's a lie we tell ourselves. And what we tell ourselves is, when it comes to perfectionism, is that we say to ourselves, well, I'm not going to do something until it's perfect. And really, there is no such thing as being perfect. Because as I said here a couple of episodes ago, perfectionism or perfection is a moving target. It's constantly moving. And whatever work you're doing right now, you can be guaranteed that when you come back to it in six months time or a year from now, you're going to see all the mistakes. It's not going to be as high quality as you think it is right now. You're going to record a video today where you just talk away and you think to yourself, God, that was the best video I've ever done. You know, I can't get better than that. But I know for a fact that when you come back to that video in six months from now and you watch yourself, you are going to be ashamed at how bad it is. What you should do, because if you can see the flaws in the previous work that you've done, it means you're improving. It means you're getting better. And when it comes to procrastination, that should not be part of your vocabulary. It shouldn't even be there. Because the reason that you are procrastinating is you don't have a big enough why. Because if you had a big enough why, you would find the time. You would find the energy. You would find the motivation to take action. That's one thing personally I can never understand when it comes to building a business online where, you know, I may be just maybe in a group or whatever and I might be looking at some people's comments and somebody says, I've got a big problem with procrastination. I'm always procrastinating. And I can never understand that because I'm thinking to myself, if you are fired up, if you have a big dream and a big goal, that should not even come up because you shouldn't be pushing off that dream or goal. Because I want you to think about it for a moment. If you don't take action on this big dream that you have today, it means you're going to have one day less of enjoying that success. And every day you don't take action, that is going to be another day that you are not going to be there enjoying that success. So you're actually shortchanging yourself by not taking action. And again, if you do feel that procrastination is your problem, work out your why. Again, I've covered this before in a previous episode here in the podcast, because your why is going to be the fuel that's going to fire you up every single day on those days where you're not motivated, where you're uninspired and you just don't want to take action. So you need to find out why you want to do this. It's not the how that's going to be your problem. It's going to be your why. Once you've got a why, you can work out the how. You can work out how to do it. And with most things, there are a lot of different ways you can make money online. There's so many ways you can make money with your passion. So don't think about the how's holding you back. It's the why that is probably holding you back. So I want you just to take those two words out of your vocabulary. Don't even think about them. And don't hang around people who use them. Now again, another thing you can do too, if you do find that it is, you know, you're having difficulty working on your business because maybe, as I said, you're working on your own. You could possibly go into groups where people are like you. Now, one thing I would just warn you about is actually getting into groups where people just sit there all day just talking about working on the business when they're not working on the business. Now, this was something that used to drive me crazy when it came to fiction writing. I used to follow a few people on Twitter just because I was new to fiction. I wasn't too sure how to write books. And I thought, well, if I get into some of these groups here on Twitter and Facebook and find out, you know, what they do, that's going to help me. Now, what I found was when I got into those groups, those writers were just simply moaning. They were moaning about, oh, it's really hard to get a book published. Oh, it's really hard to come up with ideas. Oh, it's really hard to find someone who is going to help me, like find an agent. Or, you know, it's really hard And all these people were just complaining, complaining, complaining in this group. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're a writer, shouldn't you be not in this group and actually writing? Because writers write. And I don't want you to get sucked into one of these groups where maybe there is a group on passion businesses and everybody is just moaning. Everybody is just groaning. And everybody's not actually doing the work that they should be doing. It's okay looking for support. You would possibly better be maybe hiring a coach just one-on-one, someone who's done the things that you would like to do that you can call on for support 
when you need motivation, when you need to, you know, someone to answer the question. That might be a better option for you than getting into those groups where those people are just being busy fools, not actually doing it. Again, those groups, if those people were keen about the passion business, they wouldn't have time to be on those groups. So I would question, you know, those people who would be in those groups, are they really committed? And again, let's go back to your why as well too. If you've got a strong why, your time should be solely focused on you and not on these people who complain about getting the work done or that's too hard because you will find that those people too will bring you down. They'll start to make you think that it is hard to make money online, that it is hard to make money from your passion business. Again, going back to those fiction people that I used to hang around with, I used to think to myself, well, is it that hard to write a book? You know, is it hard to get a book published? And really, at the time, all I did was wrote my book, put it on the Kindle store, and it was live the next day. And I was selling the books all over the world. I'm thinking to myself, why do these people complain about that it's hard to sell books or that it's hard to get an agent? You know, shouldn't you just take a book and just put it on the Kindle store and sell it? And that was it. So I don't want you getting tied into people who you think are going to be supportive of you. Be aware of the people. Are they, you know, giving you energy? Are they giving you motivation? Or are they bringing you down? And if they're there hanging there around there in that group all day, again, are they really the shit people? Are they really the people you should be hanging around with? Because most of those people should be too busy to even be in those groups. So I want you to seriously think about you. Because as I said, if anyone is going to screw this up, it's going to be you. You are going to be your worst enemy. So you need to think about your self-discipline. If you're not, if you don't have much discipline, you really need to work on that. You need to work on your accountability. You have to realize that oh, it's okay. This is going to be a passion business, but there will be days when you're just got, not going to be motivated or inspired, and it's going to be a real chore to put your butt in the seat and do the work. So. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. As I said, you know, sometimes we need these kind of mental tweaks to be more successful. And if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love maybe if you could share this episode with anybody you think needs to hear it. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave comments um, below this podcast episode. And as always, have a lovely day and thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.